Hi, so in this video we are going to learn about rational numbers. So as you can see I have already noted down the definition of rational numbers. So first we will read the definition and then we will try to understand what they really are. Right? So the definition says a number of the form p by q where q is not 0. That means the denominator of the fraction p by q is not 0 and p and q are integers. So both p and q has to be integers and p by q is in its simplest form that is p and q don't have any common factors is called a rational number. Right? So first thing which we can understand from this is a number which can be denoted as a fraction is called the rational number. Right? And it has to be denoted in the form of p by q where this q is not equal to 0 and p and q both actually belongs to the set of integers that means capital Z. Capital Z is the set of integers right. Z is the set of integers and integers have negative numbers that is minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1 and it also has 0 and along with this it has all the positive natural numbers right that means it will have 1, 2, 3 and so on right this was the set of integers okay so any number which can be represented in this form p by q is called a rational number right Yes, and these P and Q should be in such a way that they don't have any common factor, right? That means this should actually be the simplest form of the fraction, right? If they have any common factor, divide both numerator and denominator by that common factor and then you will arrive to the simplest form of the fraction which will be called as rational number, right? So I think you understood what is rational number. Now let's take few examples. So a number like 2 by 3, 1 by 4, 7 by 17 or 3 by 11 or 13 by 19. All these numbers are actually in the form of P by Q, right? All of them are in the form of P by Q. And there is no common factor between the numerators and denominators, right? So all these numbers are called rational numbers. Now the question is, are these integers or these natural numbers are rational numbers? Yes, 2 can be represented as 2 by 1, right? Where we can say P is equal to 2 and Q is equal to 1. And both of them belong to the set of integers, right? So 2 is also a rational number. And similarly, any integer or any natural number or any whole number, all of them can be represented in this form. And that is why we say that all of them are actually a subset of rational numbers. And if we recollect all the earlier learnings about number types, we had, first we had natural numbers, which had 1, 2, 3, 4 till infinity and then we had whole number which had one extra 0 other than the set of natural numbers. So natural number is actually a subset of whole number and then we had integers which had 0, all the positive natural numbers and it had all the negative natural numbers also. So this whole number is actually a subset of integers. Right? And now we have got these rational numbers and these rational numbers are represented as Q. Right? And as we have seen here, we can represent all the integers in the form of rational numbers. That means this set of integers is actually a subset of rational numbers. Right? And then we have a set of irrational numbers. So the numbers like square root of 2 or square root of 3 or for that matter square root of 5. These are the numbers which cannot be represented as p by q in the form of p by q 
and that is why we call these numbers as irrational numbers and this set is represented as Q dash. This set is actually a complementary set of the set of rational numbers. So we represent the set of irrational numbers as Q dash and they together that means the set of rational numbers union the set of irrational numbers are called real numbers and we represent it as R and it is called real numbers. So in this video we have learned rational numbers, irrational numbers and then together they are called real numbers. So actually the set of natural numbers is a proper subset of whole numbers and the set of whole numbers is a proper subset of integers and integers is actually a proper subset of the set of rational numbers and this rational number is a proper subset of the real numbers, right? So this relation can actually be represented as a set of concentric circles where this innermost circle represents natural numbers and then the circle just after this represents the set of whole numbers and then we have this set this circle represents the set of all integers and then we have this circle and it represents the set of all the rational numbers that is Q and then we can draw one more circle which actually contains all of them and this can be called as the set of real numbers which is actually the superset of all the other types of numbers, right? And what about irrational numbers? Irrational numbers don't have anything common with other type of numbers, right? But it is definitely a part of real numbers. So it will be a subset of real numbers. That means it has to be represented inside the circle which represent the real numbers. So you can represent it something like this. And this will be called the set of irrational numbers, right? So this is what is the relation between all the types of the numbers and in the next video we are actually going to discuss the different types of rational numbers that means how to identify a rational number and if you are given some decimal number then we'll learn how to convert that decimal number into a rational number right so there are two types and those two types are really very interesting so keep watching MathSmart and bye bye till then